I got started in music as a, actually a high school student. I was playing early winds, and then um, in college I started playing the viola da gamba, and quickly just became really interested in that in the repertoire of the Baroque period and the Renaissance. I started playing classical guitar when I was a music major in college, and I ended up being just drawn to the sound of the early repertoire and I played a lot of lute music on the guitar and eventually just wondered, well, what would this sound like on the real instrument? I began studying modern violin and went to conservatory and became really interested about 10 years ago in um, early music performance practice and playing Baroque violin and this really sort of grabbed hold of me. Um, and became my main interest, but it wasn't necessarily something that I could devote all of my time to. There aren't too many configurations and ways in which one can make a living entirely from performing um, on Baroque violin. There are very few people who can make a living playing the instruments that I do, which are very obscure, the flute and the theorbo, and I feel very fortunate that we can do that here in Pittsburgh, so that was the initial attraction coming to Pittsburgh and being able to do this professionally full-time and uh, make a living at it. It's the kind of thing that wasn't happening 20 years ago and, and I think it's quite thrilling. I actually was on Chatham Road's very first board back in 1991. That time I was working in the field of early music, so I came on the board in order to try to help an ensemble get started in Pittsburgh. That was, that was what our goal was, and it has certainly succeeded. Zerschmettert mich, zerschmettert mich, ihr Felsen und ihr Hügel, ihr Felsen und ihr Hügel, ihr Himmel, deinen Strahl. We perform quite a lot as a trio, but we can insert into larger chamber works and, um, you know, we invite guests to perform with us and present larger works, um, anywhere from adding another violinist to another continual player or for the, our largest concert this season, we had a total of 22 people all together. And that allows us to think beyond just the trio and do projects that are a bit more diverse in terms of repertoire. And we'll need to bring in guests from either around the city or more often from around the country, sometimes even as far away as Europe. And it's a real, it's, it's wonderful to be able to bring them to Pittsburgh and work them, with them here and then also introduce them to our Pittsburgh audience. In Chatham Baroque's uh, situation, it's also taking Pittsburgh's name out into the country and beyond because of their touring and in this way sort of bring to mind to people that Pittsburgh is really quite an extraordinary place. And it seems that after 20 years there's still just so much more music that hasn't been rediscovered and that's one of the really fun things about Chatham Baroque is that we're always finding new old music. So I think that it's we become almost like a time machine in a way um, whereby we really do try to really evoke as much of the context, um, the sound, the history um, of other music. Um, into the whole performance. It kind of evokes a sense of, of mystery too, and history and uh, discovery 
to what we do. We just want to keep doing what we're doing and bring the music to more and more people.